Hi, Rob Rocks here for Point Blank Music School. This is the first part of the new multi-series Making a Track in Logic Pro X. In this part we are talking about the benefit of using templates including pre-built settings and we also talk about how you optimize your workflow and save time. If you want to learn more about mixing, production and music making, make sure you check out our courses at pointblanklondon.com. Let's open a new project in Logic Pro X. Usually you start with an empty project. You just select new, but I'll always use my own templates. I have different templates for any situation like music production, mixing, vocal recording, stem mastering or two track mastering. There are two different opinions. Some producers, they say they have to or they prefer to work with an empty project because if they use templates, they get pushed into a certain direction. But I think that um, it totally makes sense and save time if you have your own template with your own sounds, your own effects, especially if you work for different artists. Um, in this case, I start uh, using my production template. So I go new from template, the short key is command N. And then there is this folder, my templates. I, I have all my templates in there. This is my production template. Here we go. And all the templates are stored to a specific folder on your hard drive, which is a music, audio music apps, project templates. First of all, I have two audio tracks on top of my project for the trigger, for trigger purpose. The good thing about that is um, I can drag the trigger kick or the vocal in here. And uh, I always set up my trigger to audio one and audio two, which means um, I save a lot of time when I sidechain my thins or my vocals or reverbs because it's always audio one and two. Um, I give you an example. I just drop a synth loop in here on the audio seven track and uh, a trigger kick. In this case, it's 129. BPM. Let's loop this. Let's pull up a basic compressor. And if I want to select the side chain, it's always audio one or audio two. So I don't have to go through all the audio tracks in the project and search for the right trigger signal. Let's talk about routing and sand effects. As you can see, my, my aux channels over here uh, have a, a certain order. So bus one to nine, is uh, reserved for track stacks. We already talked about that. If you have like 10 different uh, drum files like kick, snare, hi-hats, you can uh, just group them to one track stack and it will automatically uh, choose the first bus and then the second one, the third one and so on. Bus 10 to 19 is reserved for all kinds of reverbs. I have room, a medium hole, large hole, plate, and so on. Bus 20 to 29 is set up for different kinds of delays. Then I'll have a few channels with uh, special effects like chorus, harmonizer. And at the end, I have my stamps over here, my subgroups, Submaster and final master. We're gonna talk about that in detail in a few minutes. The sands are already set up, so I only have to activate them. Um, just in case I record a guitar or a demo vocal, all I have to do is uh, to set up a reverb, activate the channel, activate the plugin, 
send a certain amount to the to the channel and that's it um so i really i'm really fast to get a decent mix in the first three four hours um and even some of the plugins i mean of course i'm, go I'm gonna change uh, the reverbs and delays from song to song but some of the effects like harmonizer is pretty much the same in every song i'll give you an example this is a dry lead vocal over here Find that you believe in something I could never So I just add my reverb. I'll find you there, I know you. My delays. Find that you believe in something I could never. I'll find you there, I know you. So I'm really fast to just add a decent effects to the to the to the file and like that I, I get a really close to the final mix or production in the first few hours okay let's talk about the stamps and the sand effects as i told you before i have certain stamps over here so all drum elements go to this channel all bass sub elements go to this channel and so on um, these five or six stamps they go to bus 58 which is subgroup instrumental except the vocals the lead vocals and the backing vocals they go to subgroup um, all vocals over here i have all my subgroups okay let's do it like this I have all my stamps and all my sand effects and all my stamps they go to subgroup instrumental except the vocals they go to subgroup all vocals and all the sand effects they go to subgroup all sands. So at the end of the song I have three separated um, subgroups. This is because sometimes I want to sidechain all the vocals with the instrumental and I, it's really easy just to dial in a compressor over here with the sidechain to the instrumental. Okay, and all these three subgroups, they go to my submaster where I dial in my mastering plugins like compression, multiband compression, maybe exciter, EQ, coloring, whatever, everything except the limiting. Um, this subgroup goes at the end, it goes to the final master. The final master is only for limiting, which means I have four different types of, of limiters and I just choose between them from song to song. And this goes to the stereo out. Um, on my stereo out, I only have analyzer plugins and I also have uh, EQ. So when I'm done with my production, I have my mastering over here, my limiting over here. So I can AB my song or final master with the reference track, which goes directly to stereo out. Let me insert a reference track. As you can see, I have a, a folder named reference tracks. I have different tracks for different genres. Um, let's just take first, select the first one, go to reference one. This is a master I recently did. Let's route that to my submaster, but all the effects on my submaster and my final master, all the limiting, all the plugins are bypassed right now because this file is already mastered. And I can pull up this EQ on the master, on the master bus, and I can AB, for example, the, the sub frequencies between the two tracks. I can. Uh, select a low cut filter and a high cut filter to 
just isolate the mid frequencies and compare the mid frequencies. I can go to the top end. I can compare the two tracks in terms of loudness with the, the analyzer tool. So like that it's really fast to compare a final master from the radio to your production mix or master. There's also the possibility of creating and saving your own channel strips. Um, whenever I have a sound I want to use in different productions, I'll save the audio or even better, I'll save the channel strip. For example, I have certain effects over here ordered or named, labeled by artists, lead vocals. Um, I even have, when I open a software instrument track, I'll have um, my own sounds over here. Um, I'm, it's really fast just to dial in um, a certain sound that you just want to use in different productions. Uh, you can generate your own um, your own sound design like that. Um, all you have to do is after you created the sound, go to setting over here and then save channel strip setting as and then you can choose between bus, instrument, output or track. You can create your own folders. You can order them, name them, you can arrange, manage them, whatever. Um, they are all saved to the same audio music apps folder on your hard drive. Uh, the folder is called channel strip settings, of course. I even have my own submaster. I have different submaster settings and final master settings. Um, like that, uh, I can easily switch and adjust my sound. Um, this is going to save you a lot of time. You don't have to dial in every single plugin again and again. That This will optimize your workflow. You will save time and you will get a, f a faster, decent sound. Um, yeah, I hope that helped. Um, thanks for watching.